This is going to be a momentous day because we are finishing off our Mimis program part of this series where, uh, again, this is all structured around the Strategia mod and I have a Mimis program strategy, which the conclusion here is, or the objective here is simply to plant a flag on Mimis. And while that was active, I got all kinds of bonuses for stuff that I did around Mimis, but I think it is time to get that out of the way. But some of you are probably noticing that uh, this is not Minmus Station. We are not in orbit about Minmus. This is my station in around Kerbin. This is the Warrior King Memorial Space Station. And you might be wondering why I'm here. Well, actually, when I went, Minmus Station, if you may recall, is in a polar orbit. And that requires usually some plane changing that has to happen when you get out to Minmus, unless you time it all right. And so what I thought I'd do is try and see if I can figure out, I've never done this before, what would be the launch window to get the Mimis to minimize the plane change. And all you gotta do is start with something that's in orbit about Kerbin. So I just picked here Kerbin Station. And we're gonna set Mimis as a target. So let's go to Celestial Bodies here with Kerbal Engineer, select Mimis. Now we're not gonna fly this thing to Mimis, so let's clear out all of this stuff. We're obviously not gonna fly the station to Mimis, but um, you'll see where this is going. So, uh, let's pretend like we are. So we're gonna set up a maneuver, like that. I'm gonna put in the required 920 meters per second of delta V. Actually, that's obviously a little bit too much. So let's uh, scale that back a little bit. I'll have to come back quite a bit. Might be because Kerbin Station's in a higher orbit than I'm, what I'm used to. Oh wow, we're getting an encounter right away even though Kerbin Station is in an equatorial orbit and Mimis obviously is in an inclined orbit, but this is working okay. Okay, so let's focus our view on Mimis. And we'll talk about, okay, I gotta still tweak this a little bit. Get this so up oh, and a little bit more, oh, a little less prograde. Get that so it's right over top. And in fact, what I might do, just to kind of bring this, let's put in, oh, which, which one of these is our orbit? I think it's the orange one. Yeah, you can tell from the time. We'll just bring this down closer to Minmus. All right, now just to show you, let's bring up the station. So Mimis Station's right here. We will set it as, we'll switch our target to that. Come on. Does not want me to set that as a target. Does not want me to highlight it. There we go, set that as a target. Okay, uh, which way around it? We're gonna need to come towards the south, so let's fix that right away. If you bear with me, for just a moment longer, All right, so we're, we're pretending we're coming towards Mimis. I might just tweak this just a little more. There we go, that's good enough. And what I'm interested in actually is the angle at which I'm encountering right here. And that angle is 56 degrees. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm gonna write that down because we're gonna do some live mathematics here. That angle is 56 degrees. So if I were to launch right now, I would be required to make a 56 degree plane change in order to end up in the same plane as uh, Minmus Station here. But as Minmus orbits around Kerbin, this uh, angle will change over time. As is because the thanks to conservation of angular momentum, uh, the Orientation of this orbit in reference to the stars will stay the same, but as Minmus goes around relative to Kerbin, this orbit will appear to rotate. And I had to do a little bit of thinking, but the orbit will appear to rotate in a clockwise direction in this way. So what we're gonna what it's gonna be doing is as we go further forward in time, 
this angle of uh, 56 degrees will uh, decrease over time. So all we got to do is figure out, well, how much time do we have to wait until that angle gets down to zero? Now, Mimis's orbital period is 299 hours. I went to the KSP wiki and I looked that up. 299 hours and of course in that 299 hours this orbit will do a complete 360 degree rotation and come back to the same orientation as it is right now relative to Kerbin more or less we're ignoring going around the Sun it I'm, I'm not gonna <laughs> we can ignore that I think relatively okay so that means um let's see let me think it takes if I take 299 and divide it by 360 that means it takes 0.83 degree, or uh, sorry, 0.83 hours, not 299 days, I think I said, 299 hours divided by 360 means that it takes 0.83 hours for this angle to rotate one degree. We need it to rotate 56 degrees. So we just have to multiply by 56 and we get 47 hours. Again, I'm gonna write that down, 47 hours. A Kerbin day is six hours. So we gotta do a little bit of very quick math here. That is gonna be seven days. Seven times six is 42, that's, yeah. And I think I got that right. Seven days and five hours. So in seven days, five hours should be our launch window to Mimis. Like I said, I've never done this before. I could be completely, completely out to lunch. Uh, can we get rid of these targets here? I wanna get rid of all this stuff unset this target but what I'm gonna try and do I'll see how it goes is get out Kerbal alarm clock there it is right there and actually let's go back to the Space Center first because we're done here with the space station because if I opened up Kerbal alarm clock where I was it would end up being an alarm attached to the station here it'll be a general alarm so we're gonna make an alarm for seven days and five hours um zero minutes <laughs> and we're just going to do that and hopefully oh that's six days how did i end up doing that okay let's try that again add seven days five hours oh i think there's a it's just a raw alarm for yeah try that again there it is <laughs> i don't know what happened there the first time here let's get ourselves to sunrise and we'll talk about a couple of other things before we launch. So the plan is going to be to launch a couple of Kerbals out towards Minmus, rendezvous with the station there, attached to that station as a lander, take that down to the surface. That is going to be the plan for today. Oh, I put in six days and 59 minutes. Okay. <laughs> now I think I got it right. I still don't have it right, do I? Seven days, five hours. Oh, I time warped, you rockhead. Okay, I think it was around closer to three hours. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Over the last couple of streams, um, people have been noticing, I've been making a ridiculous amount of money. I'm over six million curb bucks, and that has to do with this Media Circus 3 contract that with every launch is adding 100,000 funds to my money i'm not sure if it's supposed to do that but it is doing that for whatever reason um i'm going to get rid of this media circus because i think that's a little bit silly um i've been it, i've already kind of broken it i think i have so much money but before i do i want to point out that with every facility upgrade i get 75 reputation as part of the media circus 3 thingy so what i want to do is actually use this as an opportunity before I get rid of Media Circus to start upgrading buildings. Um, some of these are tier three, most of them are tier two. So we're gonna do this real quick. This can get the runway. It says here minus 75 rep, which concerned me at first. I tried this bef and then reverted the game before the stream. But if I click it, you'll see it'll say plus 75 rep. So I got so much money, I might as well do that. We're gonna upgrade. <laughs> I never have to worry about upgrading. Okay, there's the... Um, Space plane hangar, that one's already fully upgraded. VAB, boom, we got so much. Oh, research and development, absolutely want to do that. 
boom, still got two and a half million curb bucks. <laughs> Do the launch pad. That's already upgraded. That's already upgraded. Uh, astronaut complex. And oh, oh, oh. These vessels are landed on the astronaut. At the astro. Oh, in. Oh, dear. In memory of uh, Warrior King, uh, I have a flag there. Uh, remove them before continuing. Okay, I'm going to worry about that at some other. Okay, it won't let me upgrade this because I got a flag planted there in memory of Warrior King Kerman. So, uh,. Okay, okay, we'll, we'll update that at another time. But now I'm just going to go into here. Media Circus, we're going to delete that. And at some point, I'm going to have to replace it with something. And I don't know what yet. Uh, Mimus program by the end of this stream should also be done. And that's what really has been shaping the last several streams. So probably going to have to be picking something else in here. But you know what? I, I, I don't know what that is right now. I'll have to think about it. If you have some ideas on what you'd like to see, let me know. Oh my gosh, look at this beautiful, beautiful place. All right. Uh, I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready to launch us some... Cur oh, wait. No, no, no. I have tons of science. Look at that. 348 science. So we're going to go into our spanking new research and development center. We're going to spend some of this. And what I actually do want to work my way towards is this specialized command module because that is where we have the mobile processing lab. I want to get a mobile processing lab out to Minmus, probably one eventually out towards the moon. But in order to do that, I have to unlock heavy command modules, which is good because then finally I have some three crude command modules. So that'd probably be a good thing too. But before I get to any of that, way down here, there's one I've been neglecting calling called Recycling. And this has an external ECLSS module for life support. It also um, adds a shower to the habitation, <laughs> the uh, hitchhiker can. So that improve, that that reduces the stress of the Kerbals giving them a shower. Uh, also have a chemical plant to be able to do some processing to do some of the waste products that are coming from different things and do stuff with them. I should have unlocked this a while ago, but I just I think I just didn't notice it was there. So I'm going to unlock that. There we go. And then we're also going to go up to here. Heavy command modules. Oh, no, I can't. OK, we'll have to get some more. But I'm going to need some more science to start working down this way. OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to time warp. I'm going to go fast, so be ready for all of the blinky lights. Oh, what happened here? Solar panel malfunction on something. I don't care. Let's keep going. Kerbalism broke something. What else is new? Oh, I got notifications here. I should look at these too. Oh, magnetometer report from high space and around the moon. Nice. Or something. <laughs> uh, this is... Oh, yeah, my Kerbal's been up for 30 days. That's uh, that's Bill, who's been up for now more than 30 days. Uh, my high-resolution altimetry scan of Mimis is now done. Excellent. That'll help with our landing. We got some milestones from when we were constructing our station, too. So we'll close those off. All right. Uh, we are done. We are there. We are at our launch window. Let's get in there. All right, here we go. Let's bring up what has been a very useful vehicle for me. This is the Terrier 1-A3. I could probably start building something a little bit better, but I ain't going to just yet. I'm going to use this. This might be its last flight. Try to build something better. Uh, but this is capable of getting into Minmus orbit, getting back. It can only carry two Kerbals. Um, so we, we're going to have to be selective of our crew, but it should be able to get the job done. Now, I do want to make a couple of improvements to it. Number one, I want to take a look at life support because getting out to Minmus is about a seven day journey, seven days back. I have 18 days, five hours of food, 15 days of water and 16 days of oxygen. So I kind of uh, that probably will be okay but it feels a smidge tight to me so what i want to do see let's look at some of these cans that's a nitrogen can i think that part's okay uh that's food and water but it's full i'm just looking to see if any of these are actually that's nitrogen oh i went all the way around silly what's this one 
There's an oxygen can that's not full. So let's just start by just adding some oxygen here. So I wonder if I get to about 30. Yeah, uh, 27 days, five hours feels a little better. That's like more than twice what they need. Also, they can restock at the station. So don't forget about that. But let's add on some more food. So we'll go to, uh, I think it'd be, oh, it's probably under Kerbalism here. We'll get a small life support box and find a place to stow it in here. A little packed. <laughs> um, actually, I can put it on the outside right here. No, oh, that's a light. Let me put it right here. Color that orange. Okay, what's that do for my food and water situation? And now I have 25 days, five hours of food, 32, or uh, sorry, 32 days, three hours of food, 25 days, five hours of water. That's worth it. Now, the other thing I want to take a look at is I plan on doing multiple landing on Mimmus, and we're going to be collecting surface samples. Those surface samples with Kerbalism cannot be transmitted. You have to bring them back. So I want to make sure I can carry these surface samples. Now, I, whoop, this is the, which one's this one? The P. Uh, how many sample slots does it have? Should say in here somewhere. Inventory slots one. Should say something about sample capacity two. So this thing is only capable of carrying two uh, surface samples. That ain't good enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to add on, I think it'd be under science, wouldn't it? Yes, there's what I'm looking for. Experimental storage unit, that will up the capacity by 25 additional slots. Beauty, okay, we just gotta find a place to stow this thing away. Oh boy, where can you go? This might be interesting. We might have to take some of this apart. No, what is, okay, let's take these batteries away for now. What's under there? Well, that's a reaction wheel. What's under the solar panels? Oh, that's a pro body. Oh, okay. Okay, so that's an old pro body. So let's take this pro body out. Replace it with the good old Octo 2. And we'll configure this really quickly. Don't need it to do any science at all. Science is all being done. And then we can stick this in here it's going to be a little bit taller okay and then i'll stick back on the solar panels six-way symmetry again sure whoops Ah, being a pain. Stop being a pain. Okay, try it again. Just want to pull them out a bit so they look a little better. Ah, oh, that's as far as they're gonna go. Okay, we'll we'll deal with that. Okay, there, about there, and we need to get those batteries back. Where did I put those away? I think I had eight of these batteries around here. And how, I don't think I should really look. How much mass is that thing? Should really look. Of course, there'll be mass added to the samples. The samples add mass too. It's only 50 kilograms. This thing had a ton of Delta V. It should be okay, he says, with monstrous amounts of confidence. We're going to go for it. You're wondering about the reaction wheels. There are reaction wheels... Oh, there are not. Oh, John says he's wondering about reaction wheels. Oh, there are small inline reaction wheels down here. That should suffice. That should suffice. So I did already have some reaction wheels in here. Um, yeah. And if they break, we got a Kerbal to fix them. Should be okay. Okay, let's build our fairing back. There we go. And there. We'll just 
just come straight. Can I go straight down or I think I have to come out just a little bit here. And then we'll close that off. You're gonna close off for me nicely. Close off. Come on, I saw it there for a moment. A little blue. Yeah, close that fairing. Okay. That I think should be good. I think that should be good. So let's save this. I don't think I changed the stats of this too much. I'm kind of inclined just to sort of go for it without a test. Uh, <laughs> of course, we've known how we know how well that's gone in the past. Um, uh, 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 I'm thinking it's okay. Let's let's just really check here. Yeah, we can. Oh, the thrust to weight. Usually I set that at 0.3. I might have actually. How could I have lost mass? I don't think that would have been possible. Yeah, let's try that. 81.5. 1.3 again. Check the staging. We get that. Then we get the little terrier engine. You know what I might just do? Oh, I cannot see in there. <laughs> Is there are ant engines? It's not gonna let me, oh yeah, there they are. Um, there are ant engines I have as backups. I'm just looking at this thrust away to 0.7 and that's gonna be in the upper part of the atmosphere. It feels a little bit, if I chuck these in here, in the wrong spot here that gives me a little bit more thrust I, I think that might be and then I might turn them off when I get up there and then other than that everything else is is normalness just get a little bit more thrust in the upper atmosphere I think I'm thinking this is okay might just go for it well we know how much it costs to go to Mimis and stuff so I'm sitting here staring at it but I'm just <laughs> I think we'll go for it okay let's let's pick our crew let us pick our crew now. Whoops. Put this over here. Um, we're going to send up, because we can only send up two, we're going to send up an engineer and a scientist. Is Bob fine for the scientist? Bob has been in orbit about Kerbin and planted a flag on the moon. Now Bob might hopefully be planting a flag on Minmus. That should uh, do him some good. But we'll put in an engineer because we want to set up that surface deployable stuff. And an engineer, I need an engineer to get the bonus on the solar panels. Um, so I need an engineer to set that up. So we got Michael O here, orbit of Kerbin, fly by the moon. Sure, Michael O is going to Minmus too. All right. So that should be good. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is it. Oh, oh, Javier. Very good point. About, oh shoot. Javier just said, aren't you planning on ditching this whole part of this on re-entry? Uh, yeah, that's you know what oh how are we going to get this down to the surface that is such a good point and oh i don't know if i want to redesign all this i guess i could put it on the top shoot okay um you know what? I'm going to make that a problem for another day. <laughs> that's a very good point. So all the samples will be stored in a section of the vehicle that's going to burn up in the atmosphere. But you know what? I think what I might just do then is rather than just to come straight back, we'll try and see if we can finagle our way to Kerbin Station. We'll dock there and then we'll, I don't know, problem for another day is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I just don't want to do it. That's all it is. Okay, we, we're going. We're going to do this. We're going to do this. So there we go. Um, we don't need alarm clock anymore. We can get rid of you. And what we need to do is we need to set Mimis as a target, and we need to time warp towards the ascending node, which is in two hours and sixteen minutes. We just missed a node, but oh well, that's what it is.
always paranoid about over time warping this. Five, four, start through a few minutes early. Now, ascending node should mean I'm launching to the north, but I don't trust myself no more. State station off here. See, I told, yeah. Okay, I want people to tell me I'm not crazy. See how it says time to relative ascending node is three minutes? But if you look at this clearly, we are at the descending node right now. We need to launch towards the south. We are at the node, but the game is t lying, or not the game, Kerbal Engineer is lying to me about which one, and I made that mistake once before. Not gonna make it again. So we're gonna run, launch script, we're gonna go six degrees towards the south, 80 kilometer orbit. Let's do this. Oh, we can select our contracts here. Okay, we're off. I'm hoping to satisfy most of these contracts today. Actually, one of them I don't think I can do. This space station requires me to put the um, a lab module on it, which I can't. So, one of these is not... Oh, three of these I'm hoping to satisfy. All right, we are off. Bob Kerman and Michael O. Kerman ready for our Mimis adventure. Our first Kerbals, not only to land on Mimis, fly by Mimis orbit minute. I don't think I've sent a Kerbal to Mimis at all. No, I have, I'm, I'm almost positive I have not. Wow. So this is a big, 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 big step. And this is the fifth launch of this rocket. So this would be SN5 of the, not this rocket, sorry, the booster I've used on other things, but the uh, the Terrier 1-A3 vehicle. This is the fifth one. One of them's docked with Kerbin Station right now, and the other ones have all done other things. It's been a pretty reliable little vehicle for me. All right, so coming over, pitching over. Demo Dev says that he keeps on trying to get into orbit and keeps on escaping from Kerbin, and that's because you're not coming over horizontally like this. Uh, I would suspect you're just kind of burning up, going straight up. <laughs> so that's what's going to happen. No, you need to get your velocity horizontal, parallel to the surface. I can understand, though, why people think that, because pretty much every science fiction movie, and even some... Uh, ones that are meant to be based on reality very rarely talk or even imply about what it takes to get into an orbit that it's about going sideways not about going up you just have to go sideways because you got to get out you have to go up somewhat to get out of the atmosphere but your velocity you need to be a horizontal velocity not a vertical one all right locking on to the prograde vector we have nerfed our thrust I'm going to keep an eye on that time to apoapsis because that's been a problem in the past. It's fine right now. It's a little over a minute ahead of us. And pretty soon, we're either going to lose, I think, I'm not sure, you know, I think we're going to lose the fairing and then we're going to lose the booster right after. So there goes that. And then we're going to lose the booster. There we go. And so we've got Terrier engine and then a trio of little ant engines just to put on a little bit of extra thrust. You can see that the script jacked up the, the uh, throttle quite a lot. So I think I'm, I'm glad I put on those little ants. The ants are not as efficient as the Terriers, so this does affect the ISP. But once we have gotten our apoapsis up to 80 kilometers, right now, now I don't need these lance anymore. So we're going to shut them down. Shut that one down. Shut that one down. Shut that one down. And then we're going to make a new stage and we're going to take these ants and stick them in their own stage. There we go. And they're now for emergency purposes. If the main engine fails, I got these ants now as backups. 
get out towards Apoapsis. Let's put this on here. It's now lit up. Yeah, that would have been a good idea. G says, I should have made an action group to shut down those ant engines. Yep, definitely could have done that. Um, but actually even using them for that orbital insertion was a bit of a last minute decision. So I didn't think that far ahead. <laughs> but that is a good idea. Okay, getting ready for our insertion. 325 meters per second. This thing is still going to have over 1800 meters per second left. That is plenty get to Mimis and to get back. All right, here we go. Yeah, look how much the throttle is up. That's to get, I think, a thrust to weight of 0.9. So I'm glad I put on those ants. I can see, actually, I'm on the right side of east, <laughs> being south of the east, because I can see the t Mimis target uh, icon is south of east. So I went the right way. I went six degrees the right way. Okay, and what do we got here? Just about reducing throttle. All oh, we are in an orbit and program is done. Nicey nice. Okay, um, I'm just gonna stick this on the normal vector for now. I'm sure it'll be fine. And there we are. See our orbit, our parking orbit there, nicely in the same plane as Mimis's orbit, which will aid in this transfer. And now comes the magic moment. Did, oops, did I do good with my timing? That is what we're about to find out. Okay, let's focus our view on Minmus here. And let's turn on our station. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm encouraged. Oh, this burn is in the past. Let's uh, hop ahead in orbit. I'm just noticing that. Okay, and let's adjust our timing the other way. But it's looking like... It's looking like this incoming trajectory is... Whoops, that was a little too much. Other way. It's looking like that incoming trajectory is pretty close to being in the same plane as our target orbit. So I am, I'm excited. I'm excited. Now, what do I got to do? Okay, the, the, let's set this as a target. It really doesn't like me clicking on that. There we go. Set as a target. It is coming around this way. So as we come in, we're going to want to be to the south of Mimis. So that's going to require... You know what? I think I'm going to just go with this burn right now. And then we'll do a correction to fix that. I like to say, that's excellent. My little exercise worked.